Are you guys like us and need extra light mounted to your vehicles in unconventional places? Maybe you're setting up a tent or you're working on your campsite somewhere. If so, Morimoto created an all new bracket kit. This is a flush mount kit for the one bangers and the two bangers. In another video, we covered the Morimoto four banger in the flush mount. If you wanna see exactly how to install the four bangers in these flush mount brackets, watch that video after this. If you guys don't know what those are, you gotta check out on our channel. We've done some extensive testing. They're one of the brightest off-road LED pod lights known to man. In this video, I wanna show you how to mount a flush mount kit in your vehicle or in a bumper. This thing is a universal product. It can be mounted absolutely anywhere. So let me show you how to install it right now. To install your flush mounts, these are the tools you're going to need. You might need additional tools depending on what you're putting this into. If it's a really thick bumper, you might need a plasma cutter or something like that more than just a Dremel. So the tools you're going to need to get this installed is a center punch, a drill, a 7 seconds drill bit, a 1 quarter inch drill bit, a cutoff wheel or a variety of cutoff wheels, some sandpaper or a metal file, depending on what you're drilling into, a four millimeter hex driver, a T10 Torx driver, a T25 Torx driver, if you're installing the angled mount, and then of course, you're gonna need some PPE. You're gonna need some gloves, depending on what you're cutting, some safety glasses so you don't screw up your eyes. Let's get to the install. The install that I wanna do is the two banger flush mount. Now, all of these are different. The holes are placed a little bit different depending on which one you do. If you're gonna do the Morimoto one banger, you're going to have different holes, obviously, but even with the two banger flush mount versus angled, the holes are in different spots. So you can't interchange the angled for the flush or the flush for the angled. You have to do one or the other unless you're drilling multiple sets of holes. So this is the two banger I'm going to install in this piece of plexi right here. The first step is we're going to install the faceplate on the two banger. So we're going to flip the two banger over and we're gonna be using our T10 Torx bit to remove the four screws right here, 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 and here. With the screws completely loosened up or removed, you can take the faceplate off of the two banger here. And we're gonna replace it with the flush mount faceplate. There we are. And let's tighten those four screws back down. A trick I learned is that you don't want to over tighten just one, get them all started, thread it in, and then you can tighten them all down. Now you can set this aside for the time being and grab your template. What we're going to do is just cut it out a little bit to make it easier to tape onto whatever it is you're going to be cutting the hole into. So grab a scissors and give it a cut. I like to cut it down just a little bit more just to make it easier. Now I'm gonna tape this on. You'll probably want to use a laser level if you're putting it on your rear metal bumper or something. If you get this thing just like a quarter inch crooked like this, you will always notice it and you'll either end up buying a whole new rear bumper or you're just gonna to have to live with it. And if you have OCD like I do, you're gonna have a huge issue. So grab yourself some tape, tape it on here very carefully, double, triple, quadruple check, Go grab a beer, come back, make sure it's still straight, and then you can start using your hole punch. After you got your template exactly where you want it, grab a punch like this, and we're going to punch all of these markings right here. This is gonna allow us to drill some holes and then cut this all the way out. We still also got these four crosshairs on the outside for the screws. So grab your punch, make sure it's dead center. If you want to go back through and do them again just to make sure that you know exactly where you're drilling, go right ahead and do that. Now grab your drill and a few drill bits. We're going to use the 730 seconds drill bit, that's the smaller drill bit for the outer four holes right here. So let's do that now. You can remove your template and drill those four holes on the outside with the 730 seconds drill bit. Don't drill into the wrong holes. If you're like me and you're really cautious before you start drilling holes into your metal bumper, those get really expensive, I get it. I do recommend using a Sharpie and we're gonna just kinda trace it. I got an A in art class. Let's get to drilling the outside hole. There 
Ah, safety first. I'm gonna get sued somehow. Some of you guys are gonna have a lot harder time drilling these holes. I have seen your guys' front bumpers, the aftermarket metal bumpers. Y'all use some thick material, so good luck. But this is what you're gonna have to do if you want flush mounts in it. So, I'm going to change this out for the quarter inch, and we're going to drill out those holes, and then we're going to use a Dremel and then cut the rest of the way. So, we're not gonna let this go outside of this black line, but you can obviously drill it inside of the black line. So I'm gonna drill these eight holes here, and then we can get to cutting it with the cutting wheel. Clean it up, double check that you drilled in the right spots, and then take your Dremel and whatever cutting wheel you're going to need, a metal one, a wood one, doesn't matter. Whatever you think you need, give it a try. Here goes nothing. Well, I think that's all it takes. Clean this up with a file, maybe a, uh, some sandpaper, depending on the material, a metal file, a rasp of some sort. Clean this up, and then we're gonna test fit this, to the tube banger, to make sure that it actually fits in the hole. You might have to redo a lot of this, or at least drumble down this to make it a little bit more smooth. Before I make it pretty, I'm gonna test fit it. So grab your tube banger, and then let's test fit it here. So my hole was a little tight. Now I'm gonna have to come back and use the Dremel and clean it up a little bit. Make sure you double, triple check. Like I said, these metal bumpers are ridiculous and I would much rather drill a smaller hole than too big of a hole. So now you're gonna take your tube banger and you're gonna test fit it. I'm gonna slap it in here, make sure that it fits properly. Make sure that the holes line up. As you can see, I'm probably a 16th of an inch off here. I do get a little bit of play, but if you're a sixteenth of an inch off in a metal bumper, you're going to be upset. So just triple check your lines, your drilling, and all of the cutting that you do. If it fits how you'd like, we're going to grab the screws that came in there, and we're gonna also grab this right here, your four millimeter hex driver. And what we're going to do is we're gonna be using these screws, the longer screws, to go through here and then mount to the backside of those two metal pieces that are included. Now, if you don't have access to the backside of your pod light, it is gonna be a little bit tricky and you're gonna to have to get a little bit creative when mounting these. So they're going to sit like this with the nut side out facing the back. So they're gonna sit like this. On the back side, they're going to sandwich and then you're gonna put your four screws in from the face of this flush mount. So I'm gonna pretend like this was difficult. It's not, I'm gonna set it right here and I'm gonna put my screw in. So it's the longer one. I'm gonna put it in and tighten it down. After a bit of struggling and hard work, you'll see the results here are pretty sweet. This is gonna look so cool on anything that you mount it to, even this faceplate here, I think it looks cool. So, and you can put this on your toolbox, you can put it on whatever you can think of. I don't know why you'd want it on your toolbox, but maybe if you had a flood beam pattern, sure. You can illuminate your garage. <laughs> There we are. Now it's cool that these kits come with the angle mount in them so you can run it this way or you can run it like this where you're gonna have it angled down. Let's say you had this mounted up in a headache rack of some sort and you need to illuminate the area. Say you're setting up a tent on the side of your vehicle or something. This is a really good mount, but the holes you drill are different. You do not want to drill these holes and expect that you can just swap this out. You can't do that. You're gonna have to drill a whole nother set of holes and now you've got eight extra holes that you didn't really need or four extra holes you didn't really need. So just wanna let you guys know this kit is super cool. If you wanna put this in your vehicle, in my opinion, it's the best permanent solution for excessive amounts of lighting on your overlanding or off-road vehicle. If you follow those steps, it's really not that difficult. It really depends on how thick the bumper is that you are cutting. So as you can see here, we got one mounted back here. We got one mounted back here, the flush mount. We got the wedge mounted here. These are the two bangers mounted. You can literally do this absolutely anywhere on your vehicle. 
as long as you're okay with drilling a hole. Go to headlightrevolution.com, type in your year, make, and model to see all of the different lights that we have tested for your specific vehicle.